Today I want to talk about finding your own musical voice. The ability to take all of your heroes and turn your playing into sounding just like you. Wow, I feel like, come on down! That's the truth, is that really everybody that you love, whether it's Randy Rhodes, whether it's Eddie Van Halen, whether it's Joe Perry from Aerosmith, everyone learned from somebody else. So you'll hear someone who listens to Ingve Malmsteen go, oh, he just listened to Richie Blackmore from Deep Purple. And then if you listen to Deep Purple, they'll go, well, Richie Blackmore just listened to Paganini. Well, yeah. Richie Blackmore and Ingve Malmsteen were both inspired by a guy that lived, you know, more than a hundred years ago. And you can always follow it back. You can go Ingve Malmsteen to Richie Blackmore to Paganini, even Eddie Van Halen to Alan Holdsworth to whoever Alan Holdsworth listened to. Brian May, who was just voted the greatest guitar player of all time, he says, you know, he loved Jeff Beck, but he's also just as inspired by Nuno Betancourt. How do you find your own voice? It's finding the magic in the players that you love and internalizing what's cool about it. I'm holding this guitar because for me, Randy Rhodes was sacred. He was the first guitarist that I ever listened to that made me go, I, I want to write things like that. I want to understand what he's doing to make me feel that way. In particular, the arpeggios he does in a lot of his different songs, like at the end of Mr. Crowley, in I Don't Know, or Flying High Again. There's these classical kind of sound where you have someone like Randy Rhodes taking from a lot of these 19th century, 18th century composers and employing it in Ozzy Osbourne to get you these incredible songs having this classical element. So that's the thing that called me out about Randy Rhodes. And I said, oh my God, that's so cool. But Randy wasn't the first to do it. Randy's just taking from a lot of his classical learning and applying it with his own voice. That's what your own musical voice is, is when you take that buffet. Hey, I really like this about Jimmy Page, but I really love Brian May's tone, Jason Becker's shredding, but then turn it into you. Because that's the thing. Everything has already been written. There's only 12 notes in the freaking musical language. So when you start playing a three chord song, that's literally a million songs. So to say, hey man, that's an Aerosmith song or that's a Led Zeppelin song. No, when Aerosmith plays it, it's an Aerosmith song. When Led Zeppelin plays it, it's a Led Zeppelin song. It's the way in which they play it with their own musical voice, with their own ideas, the swag, the production. Those are the things that start taking those 12 notes that have been played since the dawn of time, that everything and every possible progression has already been done and turning it into you. It was really cool because I was hanging out in Nashville the other day with my buddy Todd and we're chilling at the Gibson garage and this, I want to say he was like 15 year old kid came in and said, I want to be a luthier and he started picking our brains. And he was like, oh, I was writing this thing, but it, it kind of just sounds like Led Zeppelin. And I'm like, well, then change it till it sounds like you. He's like, is that plagiarizing? I'm like, no, that's what everyone does since the dawn of time, including Led Zeppelin. I mean, for F's sake, they were sued for supposedly plagiarizing Stairway to Heaven, but the truth is, it just has kind of the essence of the song that they're being accused of, but it's not blatant plagiarism. If you call that plagiarism, you're basically saying almost everything we listen to is plagiarism. In fact, I actually talked to my buddy Richard Shaw, who's written this wonderful book on music theory, uh, fretboard and songwriting theory for metalheads. And Richard brought up a really good point that one of his professors had said that if we were writing truly unique new music, that you wouldn't recognize it even as music. So once you get that out of the way, now you're free to do whatever you want. If you say it sounds too much like Led Zeppelin, why isn't Led Zeppelin suing Greta Van Fleet? Greta Van Fleet has the essence of Zeppelin. They have that kind of sound. They've captured the tone. They've captured a lot of the riffageness, if you will. But they're not blatantly plagiarizing. They're just doing their own thing. Now, granted, it is wearing their influences on their sleeve to the point where it's like, hey, man, and a lot of the old gatekeepers are like, oh, man, that sucks. I think Led Zeppelin is definitely not the worst one that you could be copying and making cool again. Take a band like Avenged Sevenfold. When I first heard them, I'm like, this is one part Metallica. This is one part Pantera. I could hear this on a, a Dream Theater record, or I could hear this on a Megadeth record. 
but it's Avenged Sevenfold. And that's because you have a band that grew up in the same time that I did. Those guys are about the same age as me. Listening to the same bands. And you want to know what they did when they found their musical voice? They said, okay, we'll take one part Dimebag Daryl, we'll take one part Zach Wilde, and they made Avenged Sevenfold. And guess what? Avenged Sevenfold is one of the most successful metal bands of the last 20 years. And now people are being inspired by them and their voice. And they're not going, hey, that's a copy of Pantera. They learned Avenged Sevenfold first. And now that they're learning about Pantera, they're like, oh, I can see where Sinister Gates got that from. And that's great. Really the best thing that you can do as a guitar player or as any kind of musician, to find your own voice is to figure out what you love about the music that you listen to. I like, you know, Queen and the Beatles, and they go from, they'll go from major to minor in the middle of a song. I love how that sounds. Like that's a little bit of magic that you can capture, and then you can employ those same, I guess, music theory concepts into your own song. I had never heard the Hirajoshi mode, or Hirajoshi. Sounds kind of like Marty Friedman, right? That's because Marty Friedman loves to use the hero Joshi. And if you listen to something like Tornado of Souls, you'll realize that that... It's literally the hero Joshi. So when you learn that, it doesn't mean I'm gonna copy Tornado of Souls all the time. I just kind of know if I want to get that Friedman sound to me, like, hey, go to the Hero Joshi mode. And I said modes don't matter in one of my other videos, and I wanna explain what I mean by that. Because my buddy Vinny on this channel, because he's a classically trained pianist, and he said, I didn't learn the modes either. And that's because when you're a classically trained pianist or you're a violinist, a very serious level musician, you do ear training. The tonalities of like what the Mixolydian sound like, like you just know it because you have that ear training. You don't say, hey, it's the Aeolian mode, you just go, that sounds minor to me. And you can write in multiple modes. Confining yourself and just saying, I'm gonna write in the Locrian. It's, again, something that people who haven't necessarily sat there with the piano going, C, 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 don't know. My buddy Todd said this the other day, Slash has this real Mixolydian thing about him. I never thought about it, but then, you know, I. When I go and play Mixolydian exercises, oh yeah, I can hear the slash in that. But if I start playing on the piano or on the guitar, I can make myself sound slashy, but I'm not thinking, oh my God, I'm playing in the Mixolydian. Does that make sense? It's just about knowing how to get the sounds that are in your mind through your fingers. That's the real truth of it all, is being able to synthesize all the magic of your heroes, all the people that you've listened to, shake it up into a beautiful cocktail, drink it into your own mind, and turn it into something creative of your own. So I encourage you, if you really want to start growing as a guitarist, as a player, as a musician, stop just copying or learning solos. Try to mess with them a little bit. Take riffs you know. I'm gonna change it just enough so it's my own riff. And it doesn't matter that you may have started from Master of Puppets or Crazy Train or whatever song you're starting from because one of the greatest feelings in the world is being able to take what you hear up here, being able to manifest it out here, have others hear it as you. Why don't you smash that subscribe button already?